Hi there, welcome to Nappy Invest. Every single weekend, without fail, I will sit down for a while, maybe about an hour or so, and go through a fair few charts of companies on the ASX, of companies on the NASDAQ, um, on the New York Stock Exchange, those sort of companies. And what I'm looking for is just signs of the sentiment in the trend in the share price of a company shifting from either negative or neutral to positive. And right now we are seeing a few companies showing that sign. And in today's video, I'm going to show you a few companies that looks like their share price is starting to turn up. And this could be a good sign moving forward. Potentially, and just potentially, we have already reached the bottom in this down market. And maybe uh, this potential boom bear market we were talking about will not come for the ASX because it does look like there could be a little bit of upside potentially moving forward, particularly if inflation keeps coming down and the threat of high interest rates is lower. So in today's technical update, I'll be focusing on Lake Resources, uh, five other ASX companies, and also two ETFs. So I am actually looking at ETFs of putting some money into the better quality ETFs. In fact, and funny enough, one of those ETFs um, has a tick code QAL. It is the QAL, Van X QAL. ETF, and I think that is one of the best ETFs you can buy. Uh, be focusing on Lake Resources. Now, Lake Resources is not the sort of company I will be buying. Um, I do understand that lithium is all the rage now, but I actually am not as bullish on lithium moving forward over the next five to 10 years as other people. And Lake Resources right now is a favorite company, a favorite stock for short-term traders because of the volatility in this company's share price. In fact, we have seen share price rise 200% in the last month after falling something like 90% or 80 or 90% in the previous month. So a lot of volatility when it comes to leak resources, but I'll also be showing you five other, well, not maybe not quality companies. Uh, definitely one of these companies is quality on the verging on quality, but uh, four other companies or five other companies on the ASX whose share price looks like it could be turning around and moving into an uptrend. And those five other companies include Wes Farmers, and that's the high quality company I was talking about, or verging on becoming high quality. Magellan Financial Group, it's been beaten down over the past year, maybe even longer than a year, but there is signs of that share price turning around. And that it now could be the time to take a position in Magellan Financial Group if you do like the next or the fortunes of potential fortunes of that company over the next five to 10 years. Premium, not sure I've ever talked about premium in one of my videos before. I have been a shareholder of that company well in the past, maybe about five years ago. And our sit in, this is a favored company among retail investors, but we have seen share price take a, about a 75 to 80% hit in the past year. And again, that's another company whose share price looks like it is turning around. And the two ETFs I'll be looking at in today's video include the NDQ, which is the NASDAQ 100, beta shares, and then the Vanek uh, Qual ETF. And I'll talk about that towards the end of this video. First of all, we're gonna look at Lake Resources and uh, quite a lot of volatility when it comes to this company share price. And this goes back to uh, around about November, 2021. So we're not talking about a year here. This is all been happening in less than one year. So one year ago or November last year, the share price was hovering around about 80 to 90 cents. And all of a sudden, a lot of hype in this company and the share price of Lake Resources went from about 80, 90 cents all the way to a high of about $2.65. And then their share price fell from $2.65 all the way back down to about 55 cents in a very short period of time. But the share price has increased about 200% in the past month. So we did see that share price low uh, in the middle of July. And now, right now, we're in the middle of August. So we can see a lot of volatility in the movement of the share price. In fact, on the last trading day of the trading week, which was the 12th of August, the share price of Lake Resources actually fell 13%. Now, I've already talked about one of the reasons why I'm not really interested in taking a position in Lake Resources is because this is a plaything for uh, short-term traders. And short-term traders love volatility. They absolutely adore this type of volatility in a company's share price because that's how they make their money or how they lose their money. So no doubt Lake Resources is a top of the short-term traders playlist or plaything, whatever you want to call it, 
And that's one of the reasons why I'm staying well clear of lake resources at this point in time. Now to five companies that I'm much more willing to take a position in than lake resources. And the first of those companies is probably the highest quality of those five companies. And that's Wes Farmers. They own Bunnings, quite diversified because they also own a lithium mine. Um, they bought a lithium mine off Kidman Resources. Was that four or five years ago? I still remember that because at one point in time, I was a Kidman uh, Resources uh, share owner. So if you do like the lithium space, potentially Wes Farmers is another company you could be thinking about taking position in. So this is a diversified company. Bunnings, they used to own coals, but they span out coals. But this is the daily chart for the company going back to July last year. So just over a year of trading here. Share price actually did reach a high of $67 back in August last year and then fell all the way down to $40 by the middle of June this year. And you can see the share price uh, falling and there was actually well-defined downtrend from the start of this year all the way through to June. So you just see the spread of the four moving averages I have here during that period. So I'm using four moving averages here. And the reason I use four moving averages is just um, what are, is, is it just, just a visualization thing? So what I'm looking for here is a convergence of the four moving averages. And then I started to spread out of those four moving averages as the share price starts to go higher. So that sort of thing does happen. That is telling you the share price of the company is moving into an uptrend. So if we go back to November last year, you can see those four moving averages were fairly tightly together and the share price was just going sideways. So that point in time, it was only a two month period, but the share price was consolidating. Neither the bulls nor the bears were winning. And what you want it, what you want to wait for is when, when you see the share price consolidating or going sideways is you want confirmation of a breakout to the upside or the downside if you're going short. And unfortunately for West Farmers, that breakout was to the downside in January of this year. And then the share price moved into that well-defined downtrend. And right now we're starting to see, we have seen a convergence of those four moving averages and there is potential, just potential at this point in time, if, particularly if share price keeps going up, that we will see uh, a new uptrend in West Farmer's share price. Now, moving forward, I think West Farmer's share price is going to be highly correlated to the overall market. And right now, I'm a little bit more bullish about the overall market. So I could be adding West Farmer's into my portfolio because this is um, a high quality company or it's verging on being a high quality company. And I think if we do see uh, a fairly a fair bit of bullishness in the market, I do think West Farmer's share price has room to grow from here. And the amount I'm thinking it could grow, I'm, I'm thinking 50% from here over the next year, particularly if we do see a good uh, bullish year on the ASX. And when I say bullish year, I'm talking about financial year 23. Now on to Alcidian, and this has been a favorite company among retail investors. Also those fund managers who do run uh, small cap funds. So I have found this company to be uh, quite favored among those sort of investors or those fund managers as well. I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, this company really hasn't hit their financials out the park just yet. But I think a lot of those uh, retail investors and those fund managers are looking well into the future and are excited about the potential of Alcidian. So this particular daily chart goes back to May of last year. And the reason I go back that far is the share price did reach a high of 47 and a half cents in the beginning of June last year. And then the share price moved into a well-defined downtrend uh, in November of last year. Share price at that point in time was around about uh, 35 cents. And then the share price fell from 35 cents all the way down to a low of 10 cents. 10 cents is a natural for every single company, a really natural um, either support or resistance level, depending where the share price is. And for Alcidian, 10 cents was a really good support level. Not only 10 cents uh, is a natural support level for uh, many companies, including Alcidian, but for Alcidian, it was uh, a, a support level going back a few years as well. But as I mentioned, without West Farmers, when you see a significant spread in the moving averages, like we did see for Alcidian from November last year, to about July this year, that's telling us share price is in a well-defined downtrend. And in those situations, I'm not going to be taking a position in the company unless I think there is really good value. I've done that in the past um, when I've just seen some really good value in a company. At 10 cents, I didn't see really good value with our city because there is a lot of risk moving forward for this company. However, in the past few weeks, we have seen a shift in those uh, that downtrend of the share price. 
We have seen those four moving averages converging, and we're starting to see a potential of a new uptrend in our city and share price. So that's the only reason I would be considering taking a position in our city is just based off a technical signal, simply because I'm not sure about the future of this company. And also, when you look at the valuation of our city, it is fairly high. It's still around $200 million or something like that. So a lot of that potential is baked, already baked in to the share price and baked into the valuation. Now to Magellan Financial Group and a lot of negative sentiment in regards to this company over the past year. And this is the daily chart for this company going back to July last year. The reason I want to go back that far is you see its share price uh, reached a high of $56 back then. At one point in time uh, in the last two years, the share price reached a high of about $70. And there was a lot of interest in this company, even at $70. A lot of hype, a lot of froth in this company, Magellan Financial Group. But one little piece of bad news, and that piece of bad news was their full year results in August last year, you can see that massive down day, a large, long red candlestick. And that was sort of the catalyst to get out. That was the bad financial news. And whenever I see that sort of catalyst, uh, that is a good sign to get out. And that is the start of the downtrend in the share price for Magellan Financial Group. And the share price has fallen from $50 all the way to a low of less than $12, which was reached in July of this year. And you see the spread of those four moving averages well apart for the majority of that time. However, in the past few weeks, those four moving averages have come together. So we are potentially seeing a new uptrend developing in Magellan Financial Group. It wouldn't be a surprise for me to see Magellan Financial Groups go sideways or consolidate from here on in, just because of the amount of negative sentiment in the overall market in regards to this company. And the other thing is Magellan Financial Group's performance will be highly correlated to the overall performance in the markets, particularly the, they really like, I think they really like Asian companies. So um, so the Asia ETF, um, any sort of Asian companies, if we start to see those companies go up, if we see a fair bit of rise in Australian equities, that could be a good sign moving forward for Magellan Financial Group. And I think that's one of the reasons why the share price in this company is starting to move up and there is that potential uh, uh, developing uptrend. It's just because overall sentiment in the market itself is becoming a little bit more bullish and that is translating into Magellan's share price. Now onto premium and uh, ticker for this company is PPS. I forgot to mention the tickers for all the other companies I've talked about in this video, Lake Resources, LKE, West Farmers, WES, uh, Cidian is ALC, and Magellan Financial Group is MFG. Premium, again, is PPS. I actually do like this company, and I've held this company in the past, but I wasn't holding this company uh, last year when the share price went from something fairly low all the way to a high of about $1.60. That high was reached in November last year. And then the share price started to slip backwards. And you see the share price starting to move into a downtrend towards the end of 2000 or towards the end of January into the start of uh, February of this year. You can just see share price below the moving averages and the moving averages starting to turn down. The market could have been anticipating some good or some bad financial news from this company when they released their half yearly results or the year results in February. And that's exactly what happened. You can see three big down days for premium in the middle of February. And that's when they released their financial results. Share price plummeted from $1.25 all the way down to about 85 cents in a few days of trading. And the share price kept on dropping from there. So bad financial catalyst for the decreasing share price, that is a good sign to get out because that negative sentiment will continue to lead to the share price decreasing for an unspecified amount of time. And the share price fell all the way down to about 45 cents, which was reached in the middle of June. But the share price is starting to turn. Share price reached, so went back up to 69 cents. Does look like 69 cents is a nice little resistance level for this company. It's struggling to get above that. We've seen share price reach that level uh, twice in the past, uh, we'll say, month or so. And the share price, if it gets above 69 cents, that would be a bullish sign moving forward for this company. But again, uh, the moving averages have come together and it's starting to look like premium might be moving into an uptrend. And because I am fairly bullish about the long-term future of this company, this is another potential buy for me moving forward. Now to the two ETFs. So the first ETF we're going to look at is the NDQ, which is the beta shares 
NASDAQ 100. So if you do want a position uh, in Apple, uh, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Alphabet, uh, any of those sort of really high quality American companies, but you're just not willing to buy those companies individually, potentially the NDQ ETF is for you. Uh, and this would be one of the highest quality ETFs on the market. Um, I would not say it's the highest. In fact, the next ETF we're going to look at, I think that is the best ETF in my opinion. But uh, you can't really go wrong with the NDQ unless you think the tech sector is in trouble over the next 10 years. But the main thing about the NDQ is we have seen the price of this ETF come down a fair bit over the past, uh, say, nine months. In fact, the price of the NDQ reached a high of about $36.50 towards the end of 2021 into the start of 2022, and then went all the way down to about $25 uh, by the middle of June. But it does look like sentiment in this ETF is starting to shift around. You can see a spread in those moving averages uh, were quite far apart from about uh, January this year all the way through to the start of August. But we started to see, we did see those moving averages come together, and they're starting to move apart as the share price increases. So it does look like there is potential of the NDQ moving into an uptrend. So now could be a good time to take an initial position if you haven't already in NDQ or even add to your position in this high quality ETF. If I was asked what the best quality ETF is on the ASX, I probably would lean towards this ETF I'm talking about now, which is Vanek Qual, Q-U-A-L. And one of the reasons why I probably focus on this is because the kind of companies they are looking for are high quality companies around the world, ex Australia. And the way they define quality or high quality is through, based off three fundamental factors a high return on equity, stable year on year earnings growth, and low financial leverage. And those three things are quite important to me when I define a company, whether it's high quality, low quality, or whatever. Probably the only, other, the only thing there would be stable year-on-year -year earnings growth. I do look at earnings growth. I do want to see that over time, but I don't need it to be stable. So I think what they mean by stable is it's growing at 10% per year every single year. I don't need that, but I want to see earnings growth. I want to see revenue growth over time. Now, this particular ETF has 301 holdings in it, uh, and it is you can go to their website, and you can actually see all 301 and what percentage each company is in this ETF. For example, Apple has 5.7% uh, in this ETF. Microsoft is at 5.3%. NVIDIA, 2.9%. Johnson & Johnson, 27 And I did a video on Johnson & Johnson a few weeks ago, or featured Johnson & Johnson in one of my videos. In fact, one of my technical videos, because someone told me it is one of the highest quality companies in the world. So I had a look at it, and I have to agree. Uh, with whoever said that. And in fact, Vanek Quo actually agree with me saying it's the fourth highest quality company in the world. So I'm just saying that based off the percentage uh, of these holdings within the Vanek. So you'd, you would think if it has a high percentage in this ETF, it must be higher quality. So Apple, highest quality company in the world. Microsoft, second highest quality company. NVIDIA, third highest. Johnson Johnson, fourth highest. United Health is the fifth highest. And one of the things I like about this ETF is diversified around the world. So we have Nestle in there. Uh, if we go down the holdings, there are quite a few non-American companies in this, uh, quite a few companies I've never heard of, uh, but that doesn't mean it's not high quality. Nike is in there, uh, Union, Union Pacific. Uh, so that's uh, I'm pretty sure that's a railway company. Unilever, BlackRock, Netflix, PayPal, Target, so some of these are New York Stock Exchange, not only NASDAQ. So that's one of the reasons I do prefer this over NASDAQ. It's just more diversified. Looking at the New York Stock Exchange, you're looking at uh, best quality companies around the world. Now onto the chart. And one of the reasons why I'm excited right now about Qual is it does look like the share price of this uh, ETF is moving into an uptrend. Share price or the price of this uh, ETF has been falling ever since, just like the NDQ, has been falling ever since the start of this year. And the share price has moved down from $45 all the way down to a low of about $33. And right now is around $37. And I think uh, the they did mention here, yeah, the NAV, um, is right on $37. So no no discount 
or no premium to the NAV right now. And I think that should be the expectations moving forward for any ETF. And because I'm a little bit more bullish about equities right now than I have been, I think now could be a good time to take a position in this really high quality ETF that is found on the ASX. That's all I have for this technical update, looking at Lake Resources, five other companies on the uh, ASX, and then two high quality ETFs. And if I was choosing a particular ETF right now, I'd probably lean more towards a call, but I don't think you could go wrong with the NDQ, two really high quality ETFs you can find in the market. Probably the only reason I would not buy those ETFs, particularly the NDQ, is just if you were thinking that tech will struggle over the next five to 10 years, and one of the reasons why it might struggle is if we see really elevated interest rates over that time period. So if you're one of those people who think the world's coming to and maybe not the world's coming to an end, but if you think uh, interest rates will continue to rise over that time period, uh, maybe NDQ is not for you. But I think you can't really go wrong with the qual because it is really diversified. It doesn't only have tech companies in there, it has a whole range, wide range of different companies in there. Uh, medical companies also has mining companies in there as well. So I think if I had to pick one ETF on the ASX right now, it would be the Qual from Van Neck. If you have any questions about any company I've mentioned in this video or the ETFs, just leave your questions, your thoughts in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.